the number 666 has baffled Bible scholars for centuries. However, what if I told you that not only has God revealed the meaning of 666, but 666 also reveals what's going to happen at the end of time. Here is your clear and present truth. Hi, I'm Tori St. Cyr. Welcome to The Clear and Present Truth. In today's video, we revisit the number 666. Not only are we confirming what it means, but now we reveal that this number paints a picture of what the end of the world is going to look like. In our previous video, we discovered that these 10 toes of iron and clay represents 10 kingships that arose east of the Roman Empire. We said those kings historically were Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Media, Persia, Greece, and the four divisions of the Greek Empire. We also made the claim that in the last days, these 10 kingships will arise once again, and they will make an alliance with Rome, which is Europe, with the papacy, which is the Vatican, and with the United States of America. This led us to make the claim that the 10 toes of iron and clay on Nebuchadnezzar's image is also inclusive of the United States of America. But the question is, how do we know? The answer is 666. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to make a bold statement here. It is not meant to offend you, but I must tell you, and it is my opinion, that if you don't understand the meaning of 666, chances are you're not going to understand end time Bible prophecy. Now, many are asking, what does the Bible say about the war between Russia and Ukraine? And my answer is this, the Bible does say there shall be wars and rumors of wars, but what you also must understand is not every war is documented in scripture. Not every conflict between nations is detailed in the pages of Holy Writ. Ladies and gentlemen, we must understand that the Bible's not documenting every serious conflict, but when the Bible does document a conflict, it's a conflict that somehow affects God's people. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to make another bold statement here, and here it is. If you can understand the meaning of 666, I believe that it will revolutionize how you view the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation. You see, what most of us are not understanding is what prophecy is doing, it is detailing the conflict between God's people and Satan. And what we must understand is that Satan is working through seven consecutive world powers. That's right, I said seven consecutive world powers. You see, in Revelation chapter 12, we read about a woman. This woman represents God's people. And we know this because 2 Corinthians 11 verse 2 says, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Now don't be misled about this woman, because the Bible says she has the sun and the moon. You see, what we must understand is that the moon represents the Old Covenant. The Old Covenant reflected the light of from the new covenant, which is the sun. So here we see that the woman had the moon, the old covenant, and the sun, the new covenant. This lets us know that she represents God's people in both dispensations. She represents Israel in the old covenant, and she is inclusive of the church in the new covenant. We also see that she had a crown of 12 stars upon her head. No doubt this references the 12 tribes of Israel in the Old Testament, but it also references the 12 disciples in the New Testament. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this woman represents Israel and the church all in one. Now, Revelation 12 continues to detail the persecutions that God's people had to endure when it reveals that this woman was persecuted by a dragon, which is Satan. And ladies and gentlemen, This same dragon is the same entity, the same power that tried to usurp God's authority in heaven. And then this same dragon was sent or, 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 or was cast out of heaven and came to this earth. And when he came to this earth, 
Revelation 12 details that he also attempted to kill Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross. But he did this, ladies and gentlemen, the dragon did this under the auspice of the Roman Empire. And we know this was the Roman Empire because in Revelation 12 verse 4, it alludes to Rome trying to kill Christ at his birth when it says, the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now, what I want you to do is pay close attention to the features of this dragon. Notice it had seven heads and ten horns. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to understand end time prophecy, we must understand that horns are kingships, which are kings. We also must understand that heads represent governments, but they are inclusive of kings. And we finally must understand that beast represents everyone who is ruled by the horns and the heads, but the beast is also inclusive of the government, which is inclusive of the kings. Are you confused yet? Ladies and gentlemen, these seven heads represents seven governments. Now, what we also must make sure that we bring out is that Revelation is not breaking out the Medo-Persian uh, uh, the Medo-Persian Empire as two separate governments, nor is it taking into account the four divisions of the Greek Empire. Now, open. I want you to have an open mind here because what you must understand, what prophecy is doing on a grand scale, on a large level, is documenting the exoduses and the expeditions of God's people as they transition through seven consecutive world powers. Check it out. God's people were enslaved by the Egyptian Empire. Then they were downtrodden by the Assyrian Empire. Then they were uprooted by the Babylonian Empire. Then they were conquered by the Persian Empire. Then they were persecuted by the Greek Empire. Then they were obliterated by the Pagan Roman Empire. And finally they were distorted by the Papal Roman Empire. Seven heads seven governments. Now, what we also must understand is that at the time John the Revelator wrote the Revelation, five of these seven empires had already fallen. And we know this because Revelation 17.10 says, and there are seven kings, five are fallen. So Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Persia, and Greece, all five were fallen at the time of Rome's dominance. Now, this also confirms to us that Imperial Rome was indeed the sixth head. And it's also imperative that we understand that Revelation chapter 12 picks up the story of the dragon against God's people during the time of Imperial Rome, which was the sixth kingdom. Now, in another study, we'll detail and we'll get into why the crowns were on the head and what did that symbolize and all of that, but not for today's study. For today's study, I want us to understand that 666 does in fact reveal end time prophecy. Now the prophecy of Revelation 12 continues, but unbeknownst to many, the prophecy transitions to the papacy around verse 13 of this chapter. Then at the very end of chapter 12, it talks about the earth and it talks about how the earth swallowed a flood. You see, according to Revelation 17, 15, Water represents peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Ladies and gentlemen, if water prophetically represents people, then a flood represents people that want to hurt you. In essence, the flood represents people that were persecuting God's people during the Dark Ages. Now, if the flood represents the persecutions of the Dark Ages, then what does the earth represent that swallowed up that flood? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the earth then would represent a nation or a particular part of the world that gave sanctuary to those that were fleeing the persecutions during the Dark Ages. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you may be surprised that this earth that swallowed up the flood is none other than the United States of America. Remember, what prophecy is doing it is detailing, it is telling the story of God's people as they exodus and expedition through the dragon's territories. 
So now we can clearly see that all three powers exist and are notated in Revelation chapter 12, but they're somewhat masked behind the dragon. Now, what we must also understand is that Revelation 13 picks up on this same story, but it now begins from the vantage point of the papacy. And remember, just like the little horn in Daniel, uh, represented the papacy, but it had the characteristics of Imperial Rome. Notice here that in Daniel, excuse me, that in Revelation chapter 13, the beast had the body of a leopard, it had the feet of a bear, and it had the mouth of a lion. That should sound very familiar to you. Ladies and gentlemen, in Daniel 7, the prophet saw a lion that represented the Babylonian Empire. Then he saw a bear that represented the Medo-Persian Empire. And then he saw a leopard that represented the Greek Empire. In essence, he saw lion, then bear, then leopard. But now notice, ladies and gentlemen, when John lists them, he recites them as leopard, bear, and then lion. The reason why, ladies and gentlemen, that, that they are switched is because when Daniel saw this prophecy, he lived in Babylon and he was looking through the prophetic lens down to Rome. But here in Revelation 13, John is living in Rome and now he is looking back through the historical lens back from Rome all the way back to Babylon. Notice Rome looked like a leopard. It had the feet of a bear and it had the mouth of a lion. So therefore we understand that Rome had the appearance of Greece. And what I take from this is that one of the reasons Alexander the Great conquered Persia so quickly is because Alexander the Great struck fear in his enemies and he was able to conquer so quickly. And so here we see that Rome had that same ability to strike fear in its opponents. Then the Bible said it had the feet of Medo-Persia. Well, we know that Media persia was known for its cruelness. And then it had the mouth of a lion with its ferocity. Ladies and gentlemen, make no mistake, because Daniel 7 and verse number 7 says, the same beast, this same beast looked dreadful and terrible, just like Greece. It had great iron teeth, just like the mouth of Babylon, and it stamped the residue with the feet of it, just like the feet of Medo-Persia. Then the second part of Revelation 13 reveals that another beast, which is a nation, rose up out of the earth. But now remember, the sea or water represented multitudes, nations, peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. So we see that when a beast rises up out of water, it rises up in a populated area of the world. But ladies and gentlemen, this beast rose up in a sparsely populated area. The same earth in Revelation 12 that swallowed the flood is the same earth here that the beast rose up from, ladies and gentlemen. You see, ladies and gentlemen, this beast is none other than the United States of America. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the lamb-like beast is synonymous with the false prophet. Now, many are under the impression that the false prophet represents Islam, and that's for obvious reason. But what you must understand is that the reason why it is uh, this, this lamb-like beast is also called a false prophet is because what does a prophet do? A prophet speaks for God. That's what a true prophet does. But here, ladies and gentlemen, when we look at Revelation 13, we see that the lamb-like beast is not speaking for God. It's speaking for the beast that came up out of the water. You see, just like a prophet declares the will of God, America will declare the will of the papacy. Now, see, Revelation chapter 12 and 13, I want you to see them from a macro perspective. You see, these two chapters are detailing the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. I often call these two chapters the gospel of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. You see, at the end of their narrative, and only at the end of their narrative, of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet, does it say, here is wisdom, let him that hath understanding Count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and six. You see, you see, most of us believe that this is a flesh and blood man, and many of us have been taught that this represents Nero, and some of us have been taught that he represents the Pope. And the way you're coming to this conclusion is you're using 
a process called gamatria. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't have time to get into the, the, the details of gamatria, but what gamatria is, is taking words, converting them into numbers, and deriving a message from those numbers. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to do your own research. Just look up the origins of gamatria and tell me, is it something that a Christian should use? And, and, and even worse, is it something that God would expect us to use in order to understand biblical truth? But I digress, ladies and gentlemen. What we must realize is that just like a woman in Bible prophecy represents a church, a man in Bible prophecy represents the state. You see, and we know that a man represents a political entity because Ezekiel 30 and verse number 24 says, I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon and put my sword in his hand, but I will break Pharaoh's arms and he shall groan before him with the groanings of a deadly wounded man. What you must understand is that God didn't literally put a sword in the king of Babylon's hands, nor did he break Pharaoh's arms literally. We must understand that God sometimes refers to a kingdom by its king, and a king is a man. So when God says in Revelation 13, it's the number of a man, what he's saying is it's the number of a kingdom, of a political entity. And what I want you to see is that this political entity is notated in Revelation chapter 16 and verse number 19. Notice what it says. And the great city was divided into three parts and the cities of the nations fell and great Babylon came in remembrance before God. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible tells us that Babylon had three parts. What do you think these three parts are? The Bible tells us a few verses earlier. Notice what the Bible says in verse number 13 of that same chapter. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the who? False prophet. Ladies and gentlemen, open your eyes and see what prophecy is trying to tell you. You see, there will be an end time Babylon, but this Babylon will be one power consisting of three different phases. This tells us that the name of the beast is Babylon. And what's this number? Revelation 13, 18 says, here is wisdom. The number is 666. What you need to understand is that Revelation 17 picks up right where Revelation 13 dropped off and it gives us the same wisdom and 666. You just don't realize it. So ladies and gentlemen, if five kings are fallen, that reveals that John the Revelator is highlighting the sixth king. Ladies and gentlemen, in Revelation 13, we have wisdom and 666. In Revelation 17, we have wisdom and the sixth king. You think that's a coincidence? Now it should be clear that the dragon represents the sixth kingdom. And in Revelation 13, we see a beast rise up out of the water, but this beast was given the authority from this same dragon that represented the sixth power. And then later on in Revelation 13, we see a beast rise up out of the earth, but when it spoke, it spoke with the voice of what? The same dragon, which is the sixth world power. Ladies and gentlemen, his name is Babylon. And the reason the number of his name is 666 is because the dragon, which is the sixth power, is revived in the seventh power and ultimately revived again in the eighth power, which is really the alliance. So 666 is nothing more than dragon, dragon, and dragon. Ladies and gentlemen, this is like an old horror movie where you kill the villain, but he comes back again. Ladies and gentlemen, the dragon keeps coming back again as a new kingdom. Rome, the papacy in America are essentially Jason part one, Jason part two, and Jason part three. The persecuting power of the dragon was in full force as pagan Rome persecuted Christ and then persecuted the church. Then we see that Rome converted to Christianity, but the dragon followed them into the church and usurped the church with the papacy and once again persecuted God's people. Then we see the Protestants fled the persecuted lands of Europe 
to the United States of America. But what you don't realize is that the dragon has followed us into the United States of America. And what we must understand is that one day the United States will make an image to the papacy and it will push the agenda of the dragon and persecute God's people all over again. And how will it do this? By speaking like a dragon. You see, how does a nation speak? A nation speaks by its laws that it decrees. And what we must understand is that this beacon of freedom called the United States of America, and I do love this country, and I do believe that United States is, if not the best country in the world, one of the best countries in the world. But ladies and gentlemen, regardless of what I think and what you think, according to the Bible, one day this nation will follow in the footsteps of the dragon it will follow in the footsteps of the beast and it will persecute God's people all over again. Ladies and gentlemen, what you must understand is that it doesn't matter if you're Republican or Democrat. It doesn't matter if you're conservative or liberal. It doesn't matter if you're white or black or male or female. Your persuasion is irrelevant in this discussion. What you must understand is that what prophecy is telling us is that one day America will make an image or a replica of the Papal Roman Empire. Many of us are waiting on a revived Roman Empire, but ladies and gentlemen, I got news for you. The revived Roman Empire is already here, and that revived empire is the United States of America. And now that we can see that there were three phases of Rome, we now can see that Rome consists of a pagan phase, a papal phase, and a Protestant phase. You see, ladies and gentlemen, now it should become clear to you that the feet and toes of iron and clay represents the Roman Empire, the papal Roman Empire, but now you can see that it's inclusive of the United States of America. And that's how we come to the conclusion that the United States of America is part of the feet and toes of the iron and clay. And now we can see that the feet of the image represents Babylon. And now we can also see that the toes attached to the feet represent an alliance that Babylon makes with the kings of the East. So Rome, which we can call Europe, the papacy, which we can call the Vatican, and the United States of America, complete this unity, this trinity, in the feet and toes of iron and clay. And it should also be recognized that paganism is alive and well in the lands of the Roman Empire, which today would be Europe. We should also recognize that many of the movies that contain what we call magic or dark magic is seen in the confines of Europe and even more specifically, the United Kingdom. Is it possible that paganism's headquarters is still in the Roman Empire? But what I do find interesting is that the city of London is its own city-state. What's even more interesting is the Vatican is its own city-state. And even more interesting is that Washington, D.C. is its own city-state. Could it be a coincidence that in London there's an obelisk? Could it also be a coincidence that there's an obelisk in the Vatican City? And could there be a coincidence that there's an obelisk in Washington, D.C.? Keep your eyes open on these three powers. Could it be that Europe is the connection between the United States and the Vatican? Could it be in the final days that Europe supplies the finances, America supplies the military, and the Vatican supplies the religion? Now, I must admit, I could be totally off base, and I won't argue whether this is incorrect or correct. But what I do know, ladies and gentlemen, is that America, the papacy, and the UK have already teamed up. And we know they teamed up because the USSR fell as a result of these three powers teaming up together. Thus we see that not every war is mentioned in scripture, but powers are working in stealth. Countries are being manipulated. And ladies and gentlemen, in the end, these three powers will come together and join forces like the Power Rangers morphing into Megazord. Let's see what this baby can do. Go Power Rangers, get him. Uh, 
but I digress. Ladies and gentlemen, we should not focus all of our attention on trying to know the exact details of prophecy, but our focus should be on Jesus Christ. Because what prophecy, all prophecy is telling us is that time is running out and Jesus is soon to come. And it's time for you and I to get our lives together and get it right with God. Well, our time is almost over, but before we end this video, we must test your knowledge. Who does a dragon represent? A, Satan, B, pagan Rome, or C, all the above? C, Satan, but also paganism as well. What does a woman and a man represent in Bible prophecy? A woman represents the church, but a man represents the state. What are the three phases of Babylon? The dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. What does 666 represent? A, Nero, B, Vicarious Filii Dei, C, the three phases of the sixth power. 666 represents the three phases of Babylon, which is Pagan Rome, Papal Rome, and Protestant America. And I would be remiss if I left without saying, thank you for watching, thank you for listening, and now you understand the clear and present truth of 666 in the last days.